Uh, inilista ko lamang ang ilan sa mga trabaho ng Presidente. Mm -hmm. Head of Government, Chief Architect of Foreign Policy, okay. Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Science Budget, Manages Finance, Appoints Justices, mm -hmm. Recommended by the Judicial and Bar Council, Confers National Artist Awards, Manages Disasters and Pandemics, Fights Drug Wars, Head of his or her political party, Has Power Over Aliens, Has Power of Eminent Domain, Practices General Supervision, over local governments and pardons conflicts. That's how complex, napakalawak, napakalaki, how daunting ang trabaho ng isang presidente. Samantala, sa ating saligang patas, Article 7, Section 2 of the 1987 Constitution, ang qualifications para maging isang presidente ay mga sumusunod. Number one, natural born, Filipino. Number two, a reg registered voter. Must be able to read and write. Number four, 40 years of age at the day of the election. And number five, must have resided in the Philippines 10 years before the election is held. Right now, as we talk, Senator Bombong, napapanahon na ba para amyendahan ang provision na ito ng saligang batas? Oo, hindi. Bakit? Dahil, uh, palagay ko hindi. Dahil we, the, the, the concept behind the way the Constitution uh, has approached uh, the qualifications for president is to say, is to come from the point na sinasabi, anyone should be allowed to be president. Dahil mahirap, uh, hindi, hindi nakapag-graduate, pero marunong naman, dapat mag, pwede, kung talagang kaya, pwede siyang maging Pangulo. Uh, hindi kailangan ng mga maging mayama, hindi kailangan maging sikat, all of these things. And that's the idea behind that. But we also have to recognize that we, I agree, everyone should be allowed to be president. But not everyone can be a good president. So we have to pay a, the, 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 the fix, if you want to call it that, for that. It's not to amend the constitution uh, and to amend the qualifications for president. It is to uh, change the political system uh, in terms of our choice of candidates. Dahil, wala na, ya, dahil yung multi-party system, kahit na lang sino, pwedeng magtayo ng partido basta may pera siya. At uh, tatakbo, maging presidente, wala namang hindi talaga marunong, hindi namang qualified, uh, walang magawa. Uh, dati, nung two-party system tayo, we had the liberal and the nationalista. Within the parties, everybody wants to be president. Lahat yung gusto mag-senador, mag-governor, mag-mayor. Pero sa loob ng partido mismo, ay namimili na. Tinitignan, sino bang pinakamagaling talaga dito? Sino ang ilalaban natin? Sino imamanok natin na pwedeng senador? So pagpili ng isang partido, sasabihin nila, eto mga kandidato namin, ang para mong sinasabi, eto na yung pinakamagaling talaga sa amin. Ngayon, doon sa kabilang partido, ganun din ang ginagawa. Kaya kung sino man, eh puro magagaling ang, uh, ang mga nga kandidato dahil pinag, pinag, pinagsapong na yan sa loob ng partido. So lumabas ang pinakamagagaling, ang pinakamekaya, kahit sinong mahalal, eh marunong. And that I think is the way we can, the, the way that we can, I, I, I was a great uh, proponent of the multi-party system because of my experience uh, tra uh, 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 studying abroad where I see that it has worked. But it has not really been a successful experiment. So you are for the two-party system I, in the Philippines? I think because we, we lack the political maturity yet in the Philippines to understand that ideology must play a part in the in uh, the multi-party system. Yan po ang ibig sabihin nyo na ayusin natin ang ating political system mm -hmm. by uh, coming back, going back to the two-party system. I think that... Para nasala na yung mga kandidato na para uh -huh. Britain, for example. That, uh, there's a quote that says, uh, every prime minister, uh, there is no amateur who becomes a prime minister. Mm -hmm.